Welcome to Verazzi in the Absolute Novetta 52. Now Absolute joined the trawler race last year with the Novetta 58, a boat that's been phenomenally successful for them and picked up one of our Motor Boat of the Year awards. And they've taken that blueprint, scaled it down to 50 feet and delivered a boat that has very much the same ethos as the 58 in that it's focusing on deck space and living space on board. The Novesta 52 has an aft galley layout, which isn't everybody's cup of tea, but it works well on this boat, especially because they've managed to include full-size domestic fridge freezer behind these catches here. And you do notice how chunky these catches are, nice sculpted catches either side there. Um, it's a little bit short on worktop space, but what you do have is good use of this dresser over here, where you have all of your crockery, glassware, everything like that is stored in here. Um, in these nice fiddled drawers, which are soft close and then held shut with a nice catch. That's all really nicely integrated. And you also notice the chunkiness of the wood here, the quality of it, the, the feeling of solidity underneath the oak floor. It all feels very, very well put together. Uh, and then there's nice touches like the fact that you can open up this partition, which then leads you up into this main seating area here. This vast seating area, very sociable because of its shape. Of course, your television has to come from somewhere. That's also electrically controlled, comes up automatically. And other nice points of detail, handholds up here in the ceiling, all with indirect lighting, looks really nice and very safe. And this table, these lovely milled supports so that when you open up the leaf, it's got space, uh, support underneath. The only thing I would add is maybe a finger space so that you don't check your fingers and maybe some edging just so that the table's top doesn't slam. But that aside, it's a really, really nice open area, huge windows as well, so there's loads of natural light in here. Very sociable and very usable. When you look at the outside of this boat, she's tall, there's a lot of superstructure, but you can really feel that on the inside. There's quite a steep drop down into this accommodation deck, but it does mean that the headroom is absolutely superb all the way through every single cabin. Cabin-wise, you have the VIP in the bow behind me, you have a guest cabin, a twin to starboard here, and then the master cabin amidships, which is full beam. So let's go and have a look at that one. This full beam midships master cabin is really well executed on board the Novetta 52. They've fitted a lot into it in that you have this little bureau here, which contains another automatically rising television. You have a little bureau um, with space for makeup, a stool, a mirror, They've even managed to include a sort of walk-in wardrobe, which is in here, uh, where you have a couple of drawers and full hanging space. Um, you have a little chair to this side, you've got bedside tables either side, plenty of room above your head. There is a little bit of a step up, but the ceiling goes up with you, so you still can just about fully stand up here. And then behind me is where the ensuite is, and that's really nice, it's got real marble tops on the counter, it's got a really nice modern looking sink and taps, separate shower cubicle with a proper glass door. The finish and execution on board is really impressive. So here we are in the VIP cabin in the bow. Really, really impressive cabin, this one. Loads and loads of space, especially above your head. Massive headroom in here, so much so that there's in fact a ladder in this wardrobe so that you can reach the hatch in case of an emergency. Of course, there's a pop-up television. There's one everywhere on this boat. Um, nice flat floor around where you're going to be moving around to get changed, which is, which is always good to see, nothing to trip over here. Um, good storage in the form of this hanging wardrobe, bedside tables either side. And again, a really nice ensuite, bigger I'd say than the master, if of course it's shared with the twin cabin. Marble tops again, Tecmar Lou, separate shower cubicle with a glass door, all finished to a very high standard. And another neat bit of design is the use of sliding doors. There's one here in the entrance, which of course saves you lots of space, and there's also one leading to the ensuite too. One slightly peculiar part of the saloon is this section here. Um, it just looks slightly redundant. It's panelled, so it looks like something's going to pop up out of it, but actually you press a button which you think is going to control something, and all it does is put that window down. Um, what they could do is just put some more fiddles in, maybe some perspex to hold down charts, just something so it doesn't look quite so redundant. The trawler styling gives you a nice long flybridge. On this boat, they've left the aft end here open. There's a sun lounger here, there's room for two. Uh, then amidships, you have the main section of the flybridge, which is this really sociable dinette, nice and spacious, lovely teak top table here. And then of course you have the wet bar to serve everybody from, griddle, top loading fridge, ice maker, sink, all the works. And it's nice to see that they've closed molded this lid, so it feels really high quality, nice chunky uh, handhold on top as well. Again, the finish on this boat, really impressing. 
and then you get up to this forward section where you can't help but notice this slightly stubby hardtop. It doesn't do much for the boat's aesthetics, but it does give you solid shade. It gives you handholds. It's where your lighting goes. Um, it may not look great, but it is actually quite a useful practical addition. And then you have the helm layout, which is single captain's chair right in the middle. So you're nicely located in the middle of the boat for when you're driving from up here. But they've also incorporated this U-shaped seating, which means that everybody can sit around the skipper and keep them company when the boat's moving along. I can't fault either helm station. The one upstairs is brilliant. This one is absolutely superb. What I love about the trawler style is that you can properly stand up in front of the helm station like I'm doing now. You've got a fantastic view. You're very close to the bow so you can see the waves very easily. Everything is nice and close to you, laid out right where you need it to be. And then even when you're seated, there's adjustment on this bench, which is great to see so you can get yourself nice and close to the helm, throttle, joystick, fall to hand. And it looks great too. I love these vents here. Something we say these about these nice uh, metal cup holders here, carbon effect fascia. It looks really smart, but it also works well too. And of course you have the side door, which gives you great access to the decks and a bit of ventilation as well. That's not to say though that there's no focus at all on the way the boat drives and that the idea behind this boat is if we to be a comfortable, reasonably quick passage maker. I mean we've got a bit of a chop out here today and we're doing 18, 20 knots, flybridge or down here, very, very comfortable, very smooth and also very quiet. There's a bit of squeaking coming from the cabinetry which is a bit annoying, uh, but that aside it does feel very solid indeed. The boat uses IPS 600, which means you've got twin 435 horsepower Volvo D6s. There's enough power there. As I said, 22 knots flat out. If this was a 52 foot regular flybridge, you'd probably be complaining about the performance. But for some reason, when it's a trawler style or an Aveta, as they call it here, you don't really mind and you succumb to going along at 18 knots as comfortably as this boat does. There's quite a lot going on in the transom of the Nevetta 52. First of all, you have the sunshade that automatically comes down from within the flybridge combing. And then you have lots of options back here. Optional hydraulic platform that I'm standing on now. Optional barbecue grill back here. Um, some people don't see the point of these, but I think they're great. Keeps all the smoke out away from the boat. And it also means if you drop the platform a touch, when your sausage rolls off, it rolls into the sea, not onto your teak. And then you also have the optional fit out of a crew cabin. If you don't have the crew cabin, it's storage, but this one is set up for crew, so let's go and have a closer look. Here we go then, 50 foot crew cabin. Not bad at all, really. Space to stand up, bit of glazing here to get some natural light in. Finished in the same walnut as the rest of the boat. And your berth flips up out of the way, but of course you can also bring it back down again, which is quite a nice feature, saves you a bit of space when you're not using it. But looks comfortable enough to me. You've got a separate little shower area, which is cordoned off by a screen, a sink, toilet, everything you need really. And then through another watertight door, you have access through to both the engines. Through here, you have the engine room. Really good insulation, actually. Not obviously standing room, but sort of crouching room. You can get between both lumps very easily and round both sides. Decent enough access to inspect the pods themselves. And the insulation itself is very good as well. Loads and loads of soundproofing, nicely labeled lines and pipes running around so you can see the direction of flow of liquids, see what everything is. All in all, a pretty easy boat to service and so check the daily, uh, daily things you need to do. So we've come to the end of our test and to be quite honest, the Nevetta 52 has been a real revelation. The 58 was good, but I thought, can they repeat that again on the 52? The looks are gonna divide people, that's for sure. It's not the most naturally attractive boat, but once you're on board, that all melts away. The deck spaces are superb. The interior, especially the space, again, is wonderful. Two fantastic cabins in the VIP and the master. And the big thing for me has been this step up in quality and attention to detail on this boat, even maybe over the 58. They've really, really worked hard on that and it's paid off massively, I think. Mm -hmm.